Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage of Faithful Living Home. Last week, I did something a little different um, because I've been finalizing my Bible study journal in English, French, and Spanish. And so my schedule has been really busy and my sleep is all upside down and <laughs> all kinds of things happen, you know. There's only so many things you can control sometimes. And it's okay, I'm not complaining. It's all good. Uh, but um, it kind of means that I don't have as much time as I would like to spend on, um, you know, reading more deeply uh, into the Word. So I'm doing my Bible reading uh, with you. Uh, I mean, I, I do read some uh, Bible chapters every night, but um, instead of having like a more long uh, video, uh, last week and this week, I'm doing shorter videos. And so last week, I read from uh, Philippians. I did chapter 1 on Tuesday, chapter 2 on Thursday. And so tonight, I'm going to do chapter 3. And then on Thursday, I'll do chapter 4. And I will take care of the book of Philippians. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, Paul is such a gifted writer. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in his writing. And I still have allergies, so forgive me if I sound a little bit uh, kind of, you know, congested here. It's just, oh, it's molting season with the bunnies. <laughs> and uh, spring and fall, I mean, you know, they kind of molt here and there throughout the year, but uh, spring and fall is uh, is really furry. <laughs> so forgive me if I sound a little congested, as I said. Um, this time, this week, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. And uh, we're going to be also, my husband is working on some um, editing and stuff for the video. So I'm going to be making some changes. I'm really excited about that. And, uh, but for now, we're still keeping this, this format, but shorter form, uh, because it gets a little too long, as in, in my humble opinion. And I believe it's probably the same thing for you, because uh, sometimes I can get really long-winded. So I'm <laughs> trying to behave <laughs> and not say so much in one, in one um, video. But, um, so anyway, um, tonight's uh, chapter is Philippians, uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 3. And from the Amplified Bible. And I would really encourage you, if you have a hard copy of the Bible, uh, even if it's not the same version as what I'm reading from, that's why I'm kind of picking different uh, versions a little bit. Uh, last week I did the Legacy Standard Bible. Um, I do King James. I do the Amplified. I kind of go between the three. Um, just so that, you know, some of you, it'll fit with your version and whatnot. But I really want to strongly encourage you that whenever you listen to somebody quote Bible verses or read a, a portion of a chapter or of a book or, or anything, that you actually check it out for yourself in your own hard copy of the Bible, okay? I have several... Uh, versions of the Bible in hard copy. I'm using my phone to read because it's just a lot easier and I can make the text bigger and it's just easier to read while I'm recording videos. But I really wanted to, um, you know, impress upon you that you can't take uh, my word or anybody else's word, um, even if it's, a, you know, a preacher um, at church um, in study groups and whatnot, Really get your own copy of the Bible and study it and read it for yourself, okay? Um, there's all kinds of things that go on in the world. And uh, my husband was telling me, he saw in the news, I think it was in Australia, that there's a, a pastor at some church, and I'm not going to say which, which church it is, uh, but the pastor is literally telling the people attending his church that they're not allowed to read their own Bible at home and that they're not allowed to uh, go to somebody else's home and read the Bible together. And that is not biblical. This is the total opposite of what the Bible says. And unfortunately, and I, I did the same thing like growing up and you go to church and you just take the word of the person standing at the pulpit in front thinking that they're in front. 
they 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 must be saying the truth they must be. and unfortunately it's not always the case and i'm not here to diss on anybody i'm just saying that god is watching okay and he requires everyone including myself that is teaching bible studies or teaching anything related to the bible no matter what your position is, okay, whether you're in front of a congregation of a hundred, of ten, of two, or a thousand or a million, it doesn't matter, okay? We are bound to tell the truth and to bring everyone to their own Bible, okay? So don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. You must seek God for yourself. You must understand and study God's word for yourself, okay? But it's great to be able to, to uh, read together and talk about things together and what we understand about the word. And that's why it's also important to check a few different versions because like the King James, I enjoy reading the King James, but sometimes, excuse me, it's a little hard, you know, the English gets a little bit out there right it's a little more complicated and you kind of lose the the essence so the amplified comes in handy to kind of expand and like uh, you know just kind of give you a little bit more um, normal vernacular and normal words that we use more in our everyday life to communicate the message um, so but it's important that you seek the word for yourself and that's why um, you know, there's some uh, uh, Bible study journals out there and, you know, I've seen some and whatnot and they're great, um, but it wasn't really working. They weren't really working the way that I needed, how I needed to study. And so that's why the Holy Spirit put on my heart to do my own Bible study journal. And um, it, it ended up with prayers and, and, and working with the Holy Spirit. He's very present in my life, in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I seek Him constantly. And um, together, you know, we've developed this, this Bible journal. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without Him, without God. This is all God. Um, and so, but... I was able to um, translate it into French myself and a dear friend of mine who's a long time translator, we've been working on and off together for the past 20 years, um, she handled the Spanish and so I, it's been uploaded to Amazon, it's in review right now in all three languages, so it's very very close to launching. I'm hoping by Friday, I pray <laughs> that uh, we can get this out by Friday. And um, then I can start um, showing it to you and, and you can order it yourself from Amazon. But uh, the, uh, the important thing is what the Holy Spirit put on my heart really heavily, right, is we must seek and study the word for ourselves and apply it to our life. We must take action. And so many times, I, I was guilty of this for many years when I used to go to church when I was younger and growing up, that I would just go and park my, my rear in a seat at the church and listen, half listen, you know, get distracted by things. We didn't have cell phones at the time and, and whatnot, but uh, I, I would listen, but thinking in my head about other things too, and because the enemy likes to interrupt in our head, okay? And uh, he doesn't want us to focus on the word of God and really learning what we need to learn. And so the, it is important, uh, but I would just sit there and take some stuff in, not even checking any further. Uh, and then just went on with my life and the rest of the week, I wasn't thinking so much about it, you know, but it's really important. And so that's why this journal is coming to life in three languages. Um, and it's a 52 week Bible study journal, and it's going to help you to focus all year round. And the price is uh, the, the launch price and is as affordable as I can make it. Uh, basically, I'm making, you know, a couple of dollars um, of, of royalty per sale. Uh, the, there's, you know, shipping and printing costs and whatnot with Amazon. But like really seriously, um, I've put it out. 
It's not to make bazillions of dollars, but it's because I really pray that it will be as helpful as a tool it is for you as it is for me and will be for me. You know, I've been working on this thing for several months now, and um, I'm really um, happy that we're at the stage where we're at. And so uh, we know with God's grace, um, everything will roll out fine, and I'll be able to get it to you very soon. So uh, without further ado, I would invite you to open your own Bible, um, even if you prefer to have it handy and read it for yourself after. I've read this too, if you're not reading from the Amplified Bible, can be hard to try to read and listen at the same time and then the words don't really quite match. Uh, but if you have an Amplified, follow me. And uh, if not, read it after and then, you know, maybe take some notes of some words that, that you hear and, um, you know, you'll find them in your version of the Bible as well. So tonight, Paul um, is talking about the goal of life. And this is so important because we are here for a very specific reason. God, Yahweh God, created us, each one of us, specifically to be here in this moment in time and he's created us with a specific purpose in mind. And that purpose was set before you were born into this world. Okay? And it's the same thing for each one of us, but each one of us is different. We each have a different role. Some things overlap, but we are all called to serve him. And so the Bible journal uh, will also help you figure that out. And I do have a recording and I have like, you know, about 40 videos on this channel so far um, with um, finding your purpose in God. And if you just look in the playlist, uh, the start here playlist, it's in there somewhere or just, you know, look through the, the videos on the channel there. Uh, sometimes YouTube hides some videos or puts them in the weird order. YouTube. <laughs> Love it. Hate it. <laughs> um, but if you're not sure about what your purpose is, the exercise that I've given in that two-part series, um, it should really help you discover, uncover some things because I can tell you nothing happens by coincidence. Okay. The uh, development of our lives and what we've lived through and experienced and, and what we've um, developed in skills and, and all kinds of things happens and happened for a reason, a very specific reason, because he's building up us, us up <laughs> um, for his purpose, okay? And so it's very important to really kind of stop the busyness of life and focus on the goal, not our fleshly goal, not our worldly goal, but his goals for each one of us. And so Paul uh, really talks about these things, and it's, it's really good. And so tonight, reading uh, Philippians uh, chapter 3. Finally, my fellow believers, continue to rejoice and delight in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble for me, and it is a safeguard for you. Look out for the dogs, the, Juda the Judaizers, the legalists. Look out for the troublemakers. Look out for the false circumcision, those who claim circumcision is necessary for salvation. I've heard some of those preachers before. No bueno. For we who are born again have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose, and are the true circumcision. And we're talking about, this is my own note here, circumcision of the heart. Okay? Give your heart entirely to God. Okay? Your faith, 100%. Get rid of the worries and, and the shame and the guilt and everything. Those things are not of God. It's the enemy trying to prevent you to align yourself with God, okay? So, 
who worship in the spirit of God and glory and take pride and exalt in Christ Jesus and place no confidence in what we have or who we are in the flesh. Though I myself might have some grounds for confidence in the flesh if I were pursuing salvation by works, if anyone else thinks that he has reason to be confident in the flesh, that is, in his own efforts to achieve salvation, I have far more. Circumcised when I was eight days old, of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, an exemplary Hebrew, as to the observance of the law, a Pharisee, as to my zeal for Jewish tradition, a persecutor of the church, and as to righteousness, supposed living right or right living, which my fellow Jesus, uh, my fellow Jews believe is in the law, I proved myself blameless. Now, this is Paul talking about all these things he was doing in the flesh that made him feel like he was like, you know, this and all that and, and, and everything, right? But that was all works of the flesh, okay? And so, but he says, whatever former things were gains to me as I thought then, these things, once regarded as advancements in merit, I have come to consider as loss, absolutely worthless, for the sake of Christ and the purpose which he has given my life. But more than that, I count everything as loss compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, excuse me, and of growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him, a joy unequaled. Oh, yes, indeed. For his sake, I have lost everything and I consider it all garbage so that I may gain Christ and may be found in Him, believing and relying on Him, Jesus Christ, not having any righteousness of my own derived from obedience to the law and its rituals, but possessing, possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes through God on the basis of faith. And this, so that I may know him experientially, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his sufferings by continually, by being continually conformed, inwardly, into his likeness even, to his death, dying as he did. Death to self, my friends, death to self, okay? Surrender to God. So that I may attain the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it, this goal of being Christ-like, or have already been made perfect, far from that, right? But I actually press on. And that thing, he's taking action and he's pressing on so that I may take hold of that perfection which Jesus, which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, okay, forget the past, right? And reaching forward to what lies ahead, in Christ Jesus. I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature, and by that he means pursuing spiritual perfection, okay, should have this attitude. And if in any respect you have a different attitude, that too God will make clear to you. <laughs> He's going to let you know. <laughs> um, only let us stay true to what we have already attained. Brothers and sisters, together, together follow my example and observe those who live by the pattern we gave you. For there are many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears who live as enemies of the cross of Christ, rejecting and opposing his way of salvation whose faith is destruction, 
whose God is their belly, their worldly appetite, their sensuality, their vanity, and whose glory is in their shame, who focus their mind on earthly and temporal things. But we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. And from there, we eagerly await the coming of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by exerting that power which enables him even to subject everything to himself, will not only transform, but completely refashion our earthly bodies so that they will be like his glorious resurrected body. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you, Paul. So, <clears throat> like I said, I'm sorry. <sighs> the allergies are still plaguing me right now. But I hope that this will give you food for thought, okay? Um, there's a whole lot of, you know, that the Jews were keeping over 600 and close to 700 laws in the flesh. And that that's not what's going to do it, right? You have to have faith in Jesus. And several weeks ago, the Holy Spirit asked me and, and guided me to post um, a number of Bible verses talking about the seeds in the garden and planting the, where the seeds are falling. And if they're falling in the thorns, if they're falling in good soil, if they're falling on rocks and, and whatnot. And a reminder, okay, where are your feet planted? Are they planted solidly in the Word of God? Okay? And the only way to be solid and to have deep roots in the truth is to read the Bible for yourself and meditate on it, ponder upon it, reflect on it feel you know like what is it calling you to do the god has messages for you that will stand out to you alone that will make sense to you alone and sometimes you will hear something i will say or you will hear something somebody else says and it just lights up something in your brain and it it you know and you kind of go what you know it's just how he uses right? The word to come alive specifically for you at a given time with an answer. You might have, you know, a dream or something. If you're reading the Bible, a verse that you've read before, all of a sudden just jumps out at you differently. And so you have to pay attention to that. But in order to do that and to hear or see or, or understand that, you have to be mindful and you have to be quiet and you have to take the time to sit down and seek Jesus, seek Yahweh, seek the Holy Spirit, pray every day. It doesn't have to be long prayers and all that, but make a connection and start doing it. It has transformed my life. The peace that I have received the healing that I have received is not something that you can buy or do or, or anywhere else. God is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Okay? I used to suffer from anxiety and depression and, you know, all kinds of things, right? There's no healing unless you dedicate yourself to God doesn't mean that every single one of us has to turn into a Bible teacher or or anything else that God is putting on your heart to do because doing the works and doing the those um, laws and everything else that the the Jewish developed and the Pharisees were following like crazy that's not the way okay that's the works of the flesh that's that's pointless However, you were created for a specific purpose, just as I was. And God wants to talk to you about it. He wants you to seek Him, and He wants you to, for you to ask Him. 
What is it that you want me to do, Father? How may I serve you? Okay? Because by serving God, and he will tell you, by serving God, that's how you grow that connection with him. And there's many ways of serving God. And that's the beauty of it. He's not going to ask you to do things that are going to make you very uncomfortable or anything like that. But how many people, I mean, for most of my life, I've never stopped once. I was, all, you know, I was there sometimes like praying, asking God for things, uh, earthly things that I really wished and wanted. And I'll be so good if you, you know, give me this or that. No, you know, but... Instead of this nonsense, right? Ask God how you can be of service to Him. And He will use you. And it'll start with small things. It'll put things on your heart. Or somebody will come up and ask a question that you can answer. Or somebody needs help with something and you have the skills. It'll be something, but it'll start. So pay attention to that. And sometimes, the best way that you can be of service to God, really, is to ask Him to take out of you anything that is not of Him. To help work on yourself. Help Him work on you. Help Him guide you and teach you and train you into what he had planned for you to be, for him to reveal that to you. It's transformative. It's healing. You know, and you, you can't buy that. But it has to come from you. Nobody else can do it for you. And so each one of us, we're on a one-on-one -on -one journey with Yahweh, God, and Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in each one of us believers. And the more room you make with the Word of God, the more the Holy Spirit has more space inside of you. And then there's no room for the enemy. The enemy is powerful. Do not misunderstand that. I call him a troll because... He's annoying and he needs to get out, right? But he is powerful. And unless you are deeply and solidly rooted in the Word of God, there's a spiritual battle going on inside of you, whether you realize it or not at this point. So... The enemy will leave most people alone that are kind of not really doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there parked in the church pew and they're just kind of taking in some stuff and then walking away and not really doing anything. It's when you start taking action on these words and start applying it to your life. Now you see the power of God and now the enemy doesn't like it. Right? Because now you're not complacent anymore. You're taking action. And you're consulting with God. And you're seeking Him more. And it's okay. But you must. Because the enemy, his goal is to prevent you from sanctification and I have explained that in one of my, a couple of my other videos another series I did the name of the game is the sanctification so go back and watch those videos and um, I'll see you on Thursday night God bless you keep seeking him every single day he loves you but you need to seek him, okay? Have a good night.